So have you ever wondered why dentistry is a five year course when all we learn about is teeth? Well today I'm going to be ranking all the dental specialties from best to worst so you know why we're trained for so long. So if you're new here, hi my name is Faris and I'm a fourth year dental student currently studying in London and I make videos to help dental students reach their fullest potential and give applicants a little insight into the crazy world of dentistry. As I mentioned today I'm going to be ranking the 13 dental specialties that you can do in the UK. I'll be giving my opinion about what I think is the best and the worst. Again, I've got to give a little disclaimer before anyone starts coming at me in the comments. I'm just a dentist student, this is my opinion, so maybe as I go through things, I'll like certain specialties more. And if you enjoy this video and would like to see more content like this, please do like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell down below. Now let's drill right into it. So now I'm going to be going through the 13 specialties that you can do after you've graduated. Usually once you've graduated and you finish foundation training, you can either become a general dental practitioner or you can go into these specialty schemes or specialty courses. And then as a result of that, become a specialist in a particular field. In my opinion, some of the courses are better than others. And I guess you'll find out which ones I like through the ranking today. So starting off with the first one, which is dental public health. Now, out of all the specialties, this is the one that's least interesting to me personally. It's one that focuses less on the individual and more on this idea of promoting preventative oral healthcare advice in general communities. Where you have a normal dentist where usually you'd just be treating the patient on an individual basis, this one looks more at improving the oral health of a community by doing different schemes and implementing different ideas from the NHS and etc. So for me personally, I'd probably put this one in the lowest tier, so like D tier, because I don't really think it's that interesting from the modules I've done at university, it's not really that cool. And from my own research and looking at how long it takes to train, sometimes up to four years, it isn't really worth it, in my humble opinion. I think it's ideal for someone that wants to help people on a bigger scale, but it's less of that hands to hands and one to one patient content that you'd like. Now next up in the list we have my favourite specialty which you all know is endodontics. Of course I'm being a little bit sarcastic here because I find endodontics really difficult and not that enjoyable. Now out of all the specialties I still wouldn't say it's boring, it's definitely a very 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 interesting specialty but for me I find it a little bit challenging. Within endodontics you become a specialist and you help to treat conditions to do with the pulp, most notably root canal treatments. And these can be really complex because the canals are really small and it's quite hard to actually fill them and sort out the issues that you need to sort out. So even though I don't like it personally, I do understand the appeal of it and I can see it as being quite interesting. So I'm probably going to put it in the B tier. Uh, if I found it a bit easier or a bit more interesting personally, I'd maybe bump it up a little bit. I know I'm definitely going to get a bit of hate on that one because I know a lot of people like endodontics. Now the next one on the list is one I didn't even know existed before I did this video, which is oral and maxillofacial pathology. Now from that you can understand that it's quite lab based. This isn't your natural or very normal dental specialty. A lot of the time here you're working with a lot of microscopes, so obviously we have histology, which you also know I love. And it's more of an assessment of the more complex oral and maxillofacial diseases that can manifest in people. Now this one sounds really really interesting, but as I said before, it doesn't really appeal to me because it sounds a little bit more lab based than I'd enjoy. However, I can see the appeal in it because you really do get to investigate some very interesting diseases and understand how they develop and how they can affect certain people on a personal scale. So as a result of that, I think it's a pretty decent profession. It's not something I'm personally really interested in. I'd probably put it just under endodontics in the beta, so yeah, that's kind of where I put it. Next up on the list we have oral and maxillofacial radiology. Now I've got to be a little bit careful what I say here because my dad's actually a radiologist so if I diss it too much he's not going to be too happy but basically just to cut it short this is not one that I think is that interesting now I find radiology quite cool when I'm doing it in very short bursts but to have this as your main specialty in your main career doesn't really sound that cool you're basically just taking images all the time reporting on them and they don't really get that interesting. Again, this is my personal opinion and I may be completely wrong, but I don't really want to be trapped just looking at images, taking reports, etc. I want to be with the patient at all times. I really want to get into that treatment and more. But I guess it is really interesting to do these different scans and be able to use these complex machines to diagnose people's issues. But then again, I'd make the case that as a general dentist, you still do radiographs and you still have to diagnose issues. They may not be as interesting as the oral and maxillofacial ones, but you still get that experience. So I don't really know if it's worth a full specialty by itself. So for that reason, I'm probably going to plop it in the seat here. Sorry dad. Next up on the list we have oral medicine. Now this one's a pretty cool one, but first off I just want to say the training is quite long. It's a five year postgraduate course and you really need to be quite smart to be doing this in my opinion. This profession is really cool though because it's a marriage between medicine and dentistry. You really get to treat and deal with complex cases and patients that might be going through chronic facial pain, acute facial pain and more. A lot of the time you're looking at the relationship between the medical problems and how they impact people dentally. So you really need to have a very, very, very good grasp of medicine and dentistry. A lot of the time these specialists get a lot of referrals from dentists and medics with more complex cases. And I think it is a very, very, very cool profession to go into. But personally, I don't think I have enough time or patience to basically be doing medicine and dentistry in one. However, based on the coolness and how interesting I find the profession, I would still probably put it in the A tier. Maybe if it was just a little less complex, I might put it up to the S, but for now I'm gonna leave it there. And here's another specialty that is basically lab based and that is oral microbiology. Now this specialty is absolutely tiny. When I did my research online, apparently there's less than 10 people registered on the GDC to be specialists. 
it really is a big brain profession and it gets you to look into the depths of what causes these oral issues in patients. For me, I feel it's quite detached from traditional dentistry, as you can see from the very low number of people that actually become specialists. For me personally, I feel like it's just too limited of a career to go down. There's other careers that have a lot of overlap that you can go down, such as oral medicine or oral and maxillofacial surgery. So for that reason, I'm probably just gonna put it in the C tier as well, just because of how complex it is and how little people do it. Now the next profession on the list is one of my favorites and that is oral surgery. Straight away, going in the S tier, I'm sorry. I think oral surgery is extremely cool. I really like the hands-on effect of it. I really like how engaged you can be in this profession. It allows you to do so many interesting surgical interventions with patients. The only drawback is that the training is quite long and it can be quite competitive to get a post in London or in the UK. However, the fact that you actually get to do surgery, get to deal with really interesting and complex cases, is something that really appeals to me. This is something that I'm potentially considering in the future, which is why I might have put it in the S tier. Next up on the list is orthodontics. Now, this is one that a lot of people get inspired to do when they're first applying for dentistry, usually because they've had an experience with braces that helped improve their confidence. For me, I had braces, then I didn't really wear my retainer, so I didn't really reap the benefits. So I don't really have that personal connection that a lot of you might have. However, in terms of a profession, it does seem very, very interesting and can be quite lucrative. And it is also quite interesting to go into orthodontics as it can be quite rewarding, not in terms of money, but in terms of actually helping people. It's been found through research that one of the top reasons why people get bullied, even through adulthood, is due to their teeth and having a goofy smile or just not a very nice smile. And through orthodontics, you can fix that through different methods such as braces. However, I have to mention again, you do have to do some extra training for this. It takes roughly three years to become an orthodontic specialist. So I'd probably put orthodontics in the A tier I haven't personally done orthodontics, so I can't really say if I'd enjoy it or if I think it's super duper cool. But based on my research and talking to a few orthodontists, it seems like a very interesting profession. Now there's only a few specialties left. The next one is pediatric dentistry. This basically means treating children. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't really want to treat kids because I feel like they're just going to bite my fingers off every time. But in all seriousness, pediatric dentistry is a really interesting profession to go down. Children are completely different from adults when it comes to treatment. You have to change your communication techniques. They've got completely different teeth and you get a range of different personalities to deal with. It can be a really, really rewarding specialty and you can have a lot of kids. But as I've said before, there are a few challenges in terms of actually dealing with children and helping to treat them. For me, this is a hassle that I don't really want to go down, but I can see its appeal for other people. So for that reason, I'm probably just gonna plop it into the beta. Not too bad, not something that I'm really, really keen on. Next up on the list, you have periodontics. So this is basically treatment of the gums. Now, from my personal experience, again, I have not found this super duper interesting. I think at university I've had a limited view of what you can actually do in perio. We've only really done things like basic assessments and seeing how to scale and polish people's teeth, which isn't really that exciting. However, I have talked to a few specialists in perio and they've mentioned that it does scale a lot further from just doing scales and polishes. But for me, I don't know, gums don't seem that interesting. I don't think I want to commit my time to it. So perio, again, I'm gonna probably put it in the B tier. And if you'd asked me a few weeks ago, I probably would put it in D, but you know, I talked to a few interesting dentists and they changed my mind slightly. Now, next up on the list, we have prosthodontics. Now, this one's really, really cool. You get to deal with a lot of prostheses, so using a lot of crowns, veneers, implants, all of that. You really need to have a good attention to detail to help prepare teeth when they get these prosthetics added. But the entire profession as a whole to me is really, really interesting. At first, I used to hate doing things like crown preps, but now I really enjoy them and like the idea of the whole process, creating the crown, preparing your tooth and more. And I feel like a lot of the time with prosthodontics, you can have some really, really happy patients because you can really make some custom teeth that look very, very, very realistic. With this profession, it takes about three years to train, plus more years in placements and actual time to get onto the specialty register. However, I do think it's really cool and it's something that I'm considering for the future. And as a result, I'm going to put it in the S tier. Now, next up on the list is restorative dentistry. Now, this one's a weird one because I don't really know why it's a specialty, but that might just be my limited view. The training isn't meant to be too long for this, it's about two years. It's just something I don't really find that useful. I feel like a lot of general dentists are now filling that gap of people that are doing restorative dentistry. And as a result of that, I don't really see the value of becoming a specialist in it. If there are any dentists that are restorative specialists, please do let me know in the comments down below and I'd love to have a discussion about it. But personally, I don't really think it's that useful, so I'm probably gonna plop it in the detail. Now we have our last official specialty, which is special care dentistry. This is a really rewarding specialty whereby you can help people that have certain impairments or disabilities. It can be quite challenging, but it does mean that you help people that have some real issues with their dental health and might find it a bit hard to deal with a regular dentist. You can help a range of people with physical, mental, and emotional impairments and disabilities. And I believe this specialty requires someone that's quite caring and has a lot of empathy. For me, I think I find this profession quite challenging and emotionally draining, and I really give a lot of props to someone that can go down this profession because it is is really difficult. It can take roughly about three years to train and you're quite commonly found in hospital settings. So based on all of that information, I'd probably put this in the A tier. I think it is really, really rewarding as a career. However, for me, I just think it's 
very, very emotionally draining and can be really difficult for people to go into. Now, that was my ranking of the 13 main specialties, but I've got an extra one here that you can see on the screen, which is implant dentistry. Now, I'm going to very quickly just put it in the S tier. This is one that I'm just really, really interested in. I'm very, very, very biased. I'm well aware. I think it's something really, really interesting and it allows you to have that feeling of being a surgeon without actually having to do surgical training. Who doesn't want to be drilling people's jaws and putting in titanium implants? I feel like implantology is going to become a lot more accessible in the future and become a much more prominent form of treatment. It will be interesting to see how it does get integrated into general dentistry, especially with regards to the elderly whose bones aren't that strong, especially in their jaw. However, I do feel like this profession is going to grow massively in the future and will eventually become its own specialty. We'll see in a few years time if I'm right. So those are my final rankings. If you disagree with anything, let me know in the comments down below. And if you'd like to see more of my videos and see what I get up to in dental school, check out this playlist over here. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.